Radio Day. World 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 Radio Day. Good day. Each year, the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, celebrates World Radio Day by planning activities with broadcasters, organizations, and communities around the world. In Barbados, the Media Resource Department of the Ministry of Education, Science, Technology, and Innovation celebrates this day by placing under the microscope two issues, gender equality in sports broadcasting and diversity in sports broadcasting coverage. We have moved from radio distribution to Rediffusion, known as Star Radio. We have moved from AM to FM with frequent frequency. Any modern gadget you can get, radio is on it. This production is recorded at the Gordon Corbin Studios, the Media Resource Department of the Ministry of Education, Science, Technology and Innovation, Government Hill. The radio station is 91.1 FM Educational Radio. I'm Carl Alf Padmore and this is radio. The first discussion, gender equality in sports. I'm going to introduce my esteemed energetic panel Starting to my far left, a guy in a very dapper looking jacket. I am really colorblind. <laughs> I don't know if to call this purple, pink. Maybe the ladies will help me. I don't know. Uh, Dr. Rudolph Aline, the academic coordinator in the Academy of Sport at the University of the West Indies, Kefield Campus. He was a physical education teacher in the primary school system before pursuing studies overseas. Dr. Aline has also worked in Bermuda, his area of expertise. Uh, kinesiology, but also he is an expert in sport psychology and exercise physiology. Uh, let's welcome Dr. Rudolph Aline. Then next to him, we have a mother, Andre Titus, Senior Youth Commissioner in the Youth Development Program of the Ministry of Culture, Sports and Youth. She's the mother of elite swimmer Daniel Titus. Can you swim, Miss Titus? I'm not sure. <laughs> She's the manager of the Barbados National Swimming Team. And her daughter, Danielle, uh, the elite athlete in the discipline of swimming, has won multiple medals at Carifta and has broken several records in the regional competition. Next to me, the man who's always on the spot on time. He doesn't sleep. Ken Moore Bino, professional photographer who covers a wide range of sports. He's the radio correspondent for volleyball and an executive member of the local volleyball association. He's a former national player and has managed several national teams. He's also the nation's correspondent for road tennis and the nation uh, publishing company is a local newspaper. Then next to him, we have a lady who I call ma'am. She taught me at school. Don't mind I might look older, but she taught me at school. She's Venetia Cadogan, Senior Education Officer with the Ministry of Education, Science, Technology and Innovation. She's a former secondary school physical education teacher and also an education officer responsible for physical education. She has vast experience at the international level. Yes, listen to this. Netball coach, netball umpire, netball administrator, and she's also been the manager of the national teams in netball and track and field. I have a qualified panel. Ladies and gentlemen, this is radio. Panel, I have an, an opening question. Basically, I want to hear from you. I'm going to start from you, um, Dr. Rudolph Allen. Is radio still relevant now in this modern time where people are just going on the internet, they're saying things live? Is radio uh, still relevant, especially in sport? Is it still relevant? Yes, we know times have changed dramatically, but I still believe there's some relevance for radio as it relates to sport. Um, everything is on the internet. Um, we see in everything live on a daily basis, but radio still has some relevance. Um, young people today still listen to radio, right? And that's our target market. Um, so I still believe there's some relevance for radio as it pertains to sport. Andrea Titus, the mother who's probably having her earphones in listening to radio through her iPod, and maybe now you just say it live. Is radio still relevant? Uh, give us a perspective from a mother and a manager. Um, I do agree that it is still relevant mm -hmm. and that um, 
young young people that still listen to the radio, even let's say we have we do have an audience where persons still want to hear news and really and truly the first point or the first medium is really and truly your radio. Let's go and turn on your radio because you want to hear what's happening and going on and my daughter would still listen to the radio because you still want to hear what's happening and what's going on. So it's still relevant. It's still relevant. Brother Bino, you're, you're, you're mainly behind the camera, but <laughs> you're also on radio early mornings. You can hear you at 645, 715. Radio, still relevant? If you're speaking about that big clumsy thing in <laughs> living rooms, of course not. That is not relevant. Mm -hmm. But if you were to consider um, the hundreds, if not thousands, of Barbadians who live overseas, we are talking about radio being on the internet now. Mm -hmm. But that is a valuable source for those persons who live overseas who can keep in contact with what is happening at home. Mm -hmm. They can listen to the calling programs, they can listen to the news, and they can keep abreast of what is actually transpiring at home via radio. It may have been using a different medium to get to those persons, but it's still very relevant. Mm -hmm. And so they can still listen to Kim Mobile you know, early morning <laughs> uh, on internet radio. Uh, okay. Ma'am, I can call you ma'am? You can call me whatever you want to call me. <laughs> <laughs> Is radio still relevant? There was a time that we would hear netball every morning. We're not hearing much of that now. That may be a separate discussion, but is radio still relevant in sport? Definitely it is. Everybody has been mentioning mainly the the youth. Mm -hmm. But we have a core heart out there the older persons, and I strongly believe that the, the older members of our community depend a lot on radio, and not necessarily even internet radio. That device, mm -hmm. that thing sitting there on, a, on the table or on a shelf somewhere that they can turn on and listen to, and whatever the sport is, I believe that some of them still depend heavily on the radio for information and for listening to, to sports. In addition to the youth, in addition to all the other media, media we are talking about, I believe radio still has its relevance. And educational radio is key. Radio 91.1 FM, educational radio, the Garden Carbon Studios, Government Hill. That's the radio that you should be listening to is educational radio. The first question under the microscope, we're looking at gender equality in sports broadcasting. Mr. Baino, don't be too bad behaved today. <laughs> I, I want you, and, and, and I, I want you, <laughs> Professor Rudolph, <laughs> Rudolph, I have two ladies, I want you all, do not, please. These are ladies, and they're gonna have their strong opinions. I want you two gentlemen to behave. <laughs> Gender equality and radio, we're gonna listen to this clip from Donna Simmons, and we're gonna use this as our platform to have this discussion on gender equality in sports broadcasting. What has been your experience as a sports broadcaster? Was it difficult being a woman broadcaster? It's been mostly positive. Certainly, it, it, sometimes it has been difficult, but it's different, obviously, from being a male broadcaster, particularly on television, where, you know, looks and, and how you look and what you're wearing and those sorts of things are, are, seem sometimes to be paramount. But as you go on in the business, you get, I think, used to that. And once you show that you're competent, able, know your sport, you're enjoying it, and people respond to you, I think that after a while, it becomes for them something that is routine. How did your listeners react to a woman talking about sports? I think it was mixed initially with a number of them expressing some surprise, particularly because of cricket and it's been, uh, it had been a traditionally male-dominated sport. Were you ever stereotyped? Is there any particular incident that you would like to share? Yes, I can tell you that you know, you, sometimes you sign up um, and your contract says that you're supposed to be doing cricket commentary or tennis commentary or whatever. And then when you go there, you know, you're told by a producer, hey, um, we just want you to interview people. Just sit around and, you know, find people to talk to. And you say, well, that's not the arrangement. Sometimes you have to push back. And I have to say that I, I do remember that I have experienced something that was quite surprising where you, you're picked on a commentary panel and the production team says, no, 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 we're not having any females here. And I have to say that to to their great credit, that did happen to me once, but to their great credit, the males on the commentary team basically said, well, if she's not working, we're not working. And that, that situation was quickly resolved. Wow, what a, a mouthful. I remember listening to Donna Simmons in the 80s uh, coming live with Shell Shield Cricket uh, from Kensington Oval. I didn't even know that 
there was an incident like that. Uh, Lady Cadogan, does that still happen now? Is there still a bias towards the males in broadcasting? I don't have scientific information <laughs> to suggest that it is. I am not totally surprised at the experience that Miss Simmons had mm -hmm. because the area of cricket, the bastion of the male, and for her to dare to want to become a broadcaster in a male dominated sport to start with, and then an area that, I mean, what do you know about cricket? I'm not surprised that that happened. I would like to think, though, that because of where she has gone and some of the events that have followed, I mean, I would like to think that even though there may still be issues, that it is becoming easier for women to break into broadcasting, not just in cricket. We are seeing, we are hearing the female voice a bit more, but I believe there's still a lot that needs to be done to open up avenues for women, for, fe for the female to become involved in sports broadcasting. You know? But I can you get away with that, ma'am. You didn't teach me that. You teach me to probe because can men commentate netball? I haven't heard a man commentating netball. So is there bias in netball where when you have the regional coverage, you only bring in women commentators? Well, unfortunately, it's not the 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 sport itself that determines who <laughs> will do the commentating. Mm -hmm. The broadcaster decides this is who I would like to do the broadcasting on our behalf. And I would imagine that the main reason why they select the female mm -hmm. is because it is predominantly a female sport. In Barbados, in fact, I would say largely speaking, it's a female sport. And therefore, I guess they would imagine that the women would know more and would be would understand the technical aspects of the sport more than a male and that might be the reasons why the one of the reasons why they choose the female but when you go outside of barbados that's not ne that doesn't necessarily obtain okay kenmore you've heard donna simmons for venetia Cadogan. what's your take sir well firstly the issue with donna simmons goes beyond just male female Mm. Because you, cricket fans and cricket broadcasters are very territorial. The first thing they will ask you, what do you know about cricket? I mean, Tony Cozy has been our most eminent broadcaster. And very often you would hear people saying, but he never even played first division cricket. He never played this. He never did that. And you would know the, the litmus test for most commentators initially is how much do you know about the sport? Mm. How well did you play the sport? Who knows about you? And a broadcaster has to look at, a number, at, at those factors when he's picking someone to do commentary for him. Is this a person that the listeners will gravitate towards because the person has a known reputation in the particular sport? You mentioned that there are no F any um, commentators, netball commentators who are male. Mm -hmm. as, but as Venetia Cadogan said, it has to do with the expertise. You do not bring a male a male commentator because he has a nice voice to commentate netball if he does not understand anything about a center pass or wing attack or wing defense and he does not understand the intricacies of the game. Understanding the intricacies of the game mm -hmm. is more critical than having a nice voice. Yes, so if you can get the two of those blending together, you're ready for a radio broadcast. And I think that that is the principal issue. That but, but, but in netball, you have had male coaches over the years, even um, elevating to the highest national. level, coaching the senior national team. So you could incorporate some of, of those, maybe. You know, and then you have had journalists like Ken Mobino. Uh, who have been around that ball long enough? Why can't we have Ken Moore commentating that ball? Being a very good coach or being a former good player doesn't necessarily mean that you can become a, a good commentator. You may have the you may not have the language skills. Mm. You may not have the the temperament for it. So mm. basically, that is it. Lady Titus, women, men, in sports. Is there? Do you see equality? Or is this still a bias towards male? Uh, commentators in swimming how is it how is it is it different um, I don't think it's different um, mainly we usually have ladies mm -hmm. who would commentate and so on but sometimes we would have a gentleman depending on the particular meet 
Oh. But, the, but some persons may decide, well, I won't commentate, or you may have male or female. Mm -hmm. But my thing is, is that I don't think it should matter whether it's male or female. Mm -hmm. I believe that if someone is skilled and they can get the job done, that they should be allowed to do the job. That's, so that's coming mean. from mommy. That's coming mommy from mommy. Okay. Dr. Ali, uh, you would say it from a different uh, perspective because you're there, uh, <laughs> not only at the academic level, you have done research. How, how is it? Is it really a big divide? Uh, the whole inequality, equality? It's a big divide in sport. And it doesn't start at broadcasting, actually. It starts all the way from when we play sport. Oh. If we look at sport generally, particularly in primary and secondary schools in Barbados, mm -hmm. the focus is on males. Yeah. Right? And we know that. You can list five, ten sports that males play in primary and secondary schools. Mm -hmm. Can we come up with five that females play? Bino, can you come up with five? <laughs> Maybe? Mm -hmm. Netball, swimming, um, Bino? No, not exclusively. Not exclusively. Not exclusively. No. So, so the issue is it doesn't start at broadcasting. It uh. starts from how we see sport. And we know sport is male-oriented and male-dominated. And that's where the change has to come. Because if we have more females in sport, eventually we will have more females in all aspects of sport. Broadcasting, in coaching, in all the areas. And that's what the change, that's where the change has to come. That's a mouthful. It may be for me, but it seems that the other panelists, they are going to uh, agree with you. Let's see. Uh, from the ministry's perspective, and also from your perspective as a physical <laughs> educational teacher, <laughs> let's take back the ministry perspective. <laughs> <laughs> She's here exactly. not representing the ministry. You need to put that tag there. Exactly. She's here representing her yeah. whole life. Yeah. 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 That's a good way to speak for the ministry. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Because although we're part of the ministry and the production, <laughs> she's speaking her in her professional capacity. Exactly. Otherwise, as administrator, coach, all of these things. And a woman who, the two gray hairs to the side of her head, came from me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she taught me at school. Ma'am, do you agree with, with Dr. Allen? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. But I want to take that a little further. Mm -hmm. It is true that we have the, the differences starting at the primary level. But it's, it's a very cultural issue. Already we, under, we believe that, I mean, it's, well, let me say it's true that the male is more athletic generally and, and, and all that. Generally, that's, that, that's, that's good. But culturally, we've always tended to look at the male, the male in sports, and see, and we, we've considered that to be the more important person in, 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 in that regard. But I want to take it beyond that and say that it's almost like an argument in a circle because broadcasting and what is reflected in broadcasting, I believe, will also impact on perspectives and perceptions. Mm -hmm. And if, the, if, if you're not seeing in broadcasting an, an equal, some kind of balance at least, with the male and the female, there's a message being sent to the girls. There's a message being sent to the boys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And therefore, girls are not likely to, be, to want to be as involved. Mm -hmm. Because, as I said, there's a subliminal message coming out to them from broadcasting. So where do you begin? And maybe because the persons they're broadcasting can control what happens there more, maybe if they can begin to look there to see what message can we send through the persons we use in broadcasting mm -hmm. it may begin to have an impact on what happens at the participation and the perception out there in society mommy titus sure. you, you you heard mm -hmm. dr allen you heard lady cadaver mm -hmm. what says you um take from what she would have just shared with us mm -hmm. i believe that Let's look at performance. Mm -hmm. And if we look at performance, both males and females, I believe that it doesn't matter if the person is a male or a female. Mm -hmm. If the person is performing, mm -hmm. and they are performing and meaning to the highest level, where they are able to get awards, trophies, and are recognized, we should be able to promote that. Whether it's a male or a female, we should be fair. Mm -hmm. There should definitely be equality in relation to who we promote. Not males over females, but we need to be fair. Before I, I, I go to uh, Mr. Bain, I want to share something here. The report of the Global Media Monitoring Project supported by UNESCO. Some interesting facts coming out. 4% of sports media content is dedicated 
to women's sports. 12% is presented by women, and there's a bias against women, the cultural bias and prejudice which you all would have mentioned. So let's put that out there as well. Now, Dr. Aline Bredabino made a statement that has sparked discussion across the panel. What says you, sir? I don't know why it should spark discussion because I have no issue with what he <laughs> suggested where um, the bias begins at the primary level where more, more boys tend to be involved in more sports than girls. Mm. And I think that that stems from the social mores that, uh, that have existed in Barbados for years mm -hmm. in that initially the two main sports in Barbados were cricket and football. And most, most guys wanted to get a son at birth. <laughs> You wanted to, to get one? Of course. <laughs> you have it's, one? It's, no, I have to oh, one. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay. But I always, always argue that um, most men would like to, to get a boy, but it takes a special man to raise a girl. Show me how I'm with him. I'm with him. I'm with him. Good. But, <laughs> but anyhow, um, most guys are either involved in cricket or football. Mm -hmm. And you'll find when a guy, when he gets a son, mm -hmm. if he's a man, you'll find he'll go and buy all the paraphernalia and dress his child in all the new paraphernalia, and he would hope that he would become a, a footballer or he may become the next Brian Lara. Right. So ideally most males gravitate towards or uh, hope that they can get sons mm -hmm. and that bias continues throughout the primary level and into the secondary level you see well Miss Titus follows her daughter to every swim meet. A lot of guys they're extremely thrilled when their son plays cricket or football they we see the dads turn out now for track and field. But that is a bias that has existed because of the social and cultural practices that exist in Barbados. So, so the, the male domination from playing the sport uh, goes right up to in the um, broadcasting booth, you would say. Well, I don't know why we are saying that the, there's an a intentional or a planned bias in the broadcasting booth. That just happens to evolve because more no you don't no think the so. bias the bias I do not believe that the bias is intentional. Mm -hmm. It is just that more guys are playing sports, more guys are more attractive in terms of what they produce on the field, and more fans tend to gravitate towards those individuals. You tend to know more of the male basketballers than the female basketballers. Even the female basketballers go to watch male basketballers playing. Do you think mm -hmm. I like are paying more? Not only attention, but more to the male uh, broadcaster than the female, Mr. Baino. That we're paying more to the male broadcaster than the female, female. broadcaster. Yes. It has to do, Alf, I believe that most persons, just like I am, mm -hmm. I don't care whether it's a male or female who is broadcasting on a particular sport. Mm -hmm. I am concerned more about how the person sounds in terms of uh -huh. their voice quality mm -hmm. and their knowledge of the sport. I may also have a bias towards their background where, where they have evolved from the sport. Very often, I, I often tell persons I write on more sports except cricket because everybody in Barbados believes that he or she knows everything about cricket. So I do not touch cricket at all. But, you, you, but you know cricket. Yes, I, I, I believe that I know cricket. <laughs> <laughs> you see, because the first thing people want to ask you, um, who you play cricket for? You don't know anything about cricket. That's the first thing you, I'm sure that you've experienced that when you come down at UW or doing come with you people say, well, yes. whoever you, who you play cricket for, what do you know about cricket? Mm -hmm. And that is a bias that has existed and will continue to exist in Barbados for a while yet. Mm -hmm. So if you brought Miss Titus to come on the radio to talk about cricket, for all you know, she could have played cricket for the last 20 years, but people say, well, who she is? Well, she is Daniel Titus' mother, she knows a little bit about swimming, she doesn't know anything about cricket. Mm -hmm. But I want to take you back to something that you glossed over. There seems to be a hidden rule that says you pay men in broadcasting more than women. Do you find that, Mr. Baino? I guess that is to balance out the, the, the bias that existed before. Like if you, if you compare radio to television, uh -huh. you used to get mm. a pretty face to put on television. You could sound nice and you have a pretty face and you go on television. But when it comes down to the nuts and bolts of sports, you want a person who has competent knowledge and working knowledge of the sport, so whether it is a male or a female. <laughs> you, but something <laughs> this is that he's admitting that the men are being paid more than the women. That they're being paid across sport but, but, again. But, but, but it's not only in broadcasting. That's across sport. If uh -huh. you look at the, what was paid to the West Indies, um, mm -hmm. 20 overs, uh, champions, uh -huh. the men, uh -huh. compared to the women, mm -hmm. it was 30 times more. 
right? So it's a cross sport. Again, sport by nature. And it's not only Barbados and Caribbean. This is an international phenomenon. Sports yeah. by nature is male-dominated and male-oriented. So there's no gender equality in sports broadcasting. Is that but, what but is Alf, said here? But Alf, it is not a case of gender equality or gender inequality. It's a case of e equality or inequality as to what you are bringing to the table. Yeah. If if Daniel is swimming and the sponsor turns up, the sponsor will pay Daniel, even though she's a female, more money than he would pay me because nobody wants to see me swimming. They don't even want to see me in a spandex. <laughs> <laughs> I may want to see you swimming for the comedy effect. But I understand what you're saying. Uh, do you find that, uh, Ms. Kadavan, that there's inequality going on there? That the males are paid more because of what they're bringing to the table and the women, although you may have the voice, you can do it, you are not recognized but i didn't know to be honest with you that they were being paid more than the women not at the level of broadcasting i was aware of the the athletes mm -hmm. um at, at the the international level like in cricket and whatever mm -hmm. i'm not going to accept that that sh that that's a sound way of 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 handling things it's a perception mm -hmm. you perceive mm -hmm. that the male knows more in a particular sport than a female. You perceive that Miss Titus will know more about swimming because she is at swimming. Mm -hmm. It's a perception. And I mean, I have a, a general statement I make all the time that I understand that a person's perception is a person's reality. Mm -hmm. But when we are getting into something as important as broadcasting, and if we want to look seriously at ending the inequalities, mm -hmm. then we have to take the perception out of it. We have to accept that it is perception and not assume that because you are a male in cricket or because you played cricket that you necessarily will be able to do better. Mm -hmm. There must be some way of screening and, and selecting mm -hmm. but we continue to perceive because we are comfortable and because already it's male dominated so it's comfortable for the men to continue to do that and I hate to say but the female accepts it as well and contributes to it because the female will probably also <laughs> question why why a a, a, a woman is, is is broadcasting football mm -hmm. and why is this woman you know, broadcasting the cricket so i'm saying it is this perception but it is the role of the media houses to accept that it is not good enough good enough to determine a person's capability or competence based on what you believe is their knowledge base and to seek to make to ensure and to find those persons out there if they want to to bring an end to the inequality i i must i must disagree with you because that is not the role of the media the role of the media is to find the best person that will market their product and that will gain <laughs> listenership for them they are not interested in whether you are a male or a female the best person who is going to sell my product and who will gain me a lot of advertising dollars is the person that i am going to use I agree. I agree. And I think you're strengthening her point of late because it doesn't matter if you're male or female. It matters if you are the best person possible to do the broadcasting. I don't know if you watch NBA a lot, but if you look at NBA and the NFL now, a lot of the sports broadcasters now are female. A lot of them. Right? So you're seeing that turn internationally where you're having more females involved in broadcasting in sport. I'm hoping that in the Caribbean we will see something like that soon. Again, I agree that why can't a male broadcast a netball, a netball mm -hmm. match? There's nothing wrong with that. I know at the primary school level, I always had an issue where they would always, and back in the 80s and 90s, they wanted females to play cricket because at the time they weren't playing female cricket. Yeah, I said, that's fine. But when a guy can play in that ball, I would agree to females playing cricket. And I, I got lashes for that, right? But if we're talking equity, it can't be just about females. Mm. Equity means both male and, and female. female. Okay, as we put a wrap on this, because this discussion can go on and on, let's look at the solutions. Let's bring it all together. How do we correct this? We, we have established that there is a problem. How do we correct this? How do we encourage more fair play um, in the booth of broadcasting? Uh, you first. But 
we are on the eve of general elections and for you to correct <laughs> something like that <laughs> you would have to change the people's perspective that they are just two political parties in Barbados <laughs> which is not going to happen overnight in Barbados <laughs> these are deep-bedded these are deep-bedded cultural practices mm -hmm. that have existed mm -hmm. for so long mm -hmm. it's going to take many years and a lot of yeah. pushing to get something mm -hmm. like that altered we need a third party to do a broadcasting <laughs> <laughs> lady conductors <laughs> ignore his political spin can we ever get to a stage where we see that fair play in broadcasting you think i come back to the point that dr ali made earlier mm -hmm. about this issue beginning in the primary school I did say that we have almost like an argument in a circle. Mm -hmm. Some, it has to start somewhere. I believe, and I said earlier that at the broadcasting level, they have more control. Mm -hmm. But we need to look at what happens at the primary school level. Persons at the Ministry of Education, Science, Technology and Innovation will have a part to play. Places like the National Sports Council and the Barbados Olympic uh, um, Association to sit down and examine what is happening in our primary schools. Look at some of the decisions being made. And I was saying when we were off air to Dr. Ali, even about the persons that we place in the schools to work with our students as PE teachers, um, mm -hmm. whatever. Because we, we are mixed up still with what's PE and coaching and that kind of thing. So we need to understand and at that level begin to, to, to fight, try to level the playing field mm -hmm. for the children yes because we have persons with the expertise at that level who mm -hmm. understand and who can do what is required and maybe if we could start there mm -hmm. we might be able to begin it could trickle up mm -hmm. towards the broadcast because you have mm -hmm. you might have more females involved in in sport mm -hmm. and you can find um more females available for broadcasting and i take dr Allen's point about the the the, the corollary about the male involved in that ball, but maybe if we understood and at that level mm -hmm. we made a difference, mm -hmm. some of those issues could be addressed. Mommy Titus, mm -hmm. Andrew, final yeah. parting words from you. Okay, um, in terms of going forward, mm -hmm. um, I believe that we need to look at each case individually mm -hmm. and if persons are, have the, the talent they have the necessary skills and they know that what they're doing mm -hmm. then I believe that they should be given the job whether it is either male or female that's my take Dr. Ali. Well I'm going to put the fire on the eve of the election I'm going to put the fire under the butts of the politicians <laughs> and I'm going to say we need legislation mm -hmm. in place mm -hmm. to create that equality mm -hmm. there's something called title nine in the US where any money spent in universities and colleges that get government funding it has to be equal amongst 50 percent for female sport 50 percent for male sport mm -hmm. and that encourage some level of equity mm -hmm. right so i think we need some kind of legislation in place to bring about the change from the bottom all the way up and that would translate into broadcasting well said part one of radio under the microscope gender equality in sports broadcasting this is a production of the Media Resource Department of the Ministry of Education, Science, Technology and Innovation as we celebrate World Radio Day. Because each year, the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, celebrates World Radio Day by planning activities with broadcasters, organizations and communities around the world. Stay tuned for part two. I'm Carl Padmore. Thank you. Celebrate World Radio Day.